my beautiful people. This show has had so much controversy over the last year and a half. It's insane, really. But is that controversy warranted? Like, is there a reason behind the controversy? No. So today we're going to be talking about the newly released Spongebob prequel, Camp Coral, Spongebob's Under Years. Uh, it released on March 6th, no, March 4th actually, the same day as the third movie released in America, and also the same day as the rebranding of CBS All Access, which is now known as Paramount+. Plus. I saw all the episodes a few days ago, and it's not bad, really. It's actually not that bad. I I was surprised, but no, it, this show isn't that bad, really. But basically, it's the adventures of SpongeBob and pretty much all the main characters from the show in summer camp whether or not it was established that Spongebob even knew these characters prior to the events of the first episode that was thrown out the window and just uh knew these characters and the one that people have been crying the most about is uh, Sandy the fact that Sandy is here when it was said that she is from Texas and that she met Spongebob in the first episode. The show gives a reason for why Sandy is here. We'll get to that. Concept of a Spongebob spinoff was very, uh, very much a taboo subject since series creator Steven Hellenberg didn't want there to be any spinoffs. So fingers got pissed when Nickelodeon announced that they will be making a Spongebob spinoff just mere months after Hellenberg's death. But Hellenberg was well aware that this show was, was in production, but he even gets a creative by credit. So, <laughs> plus the dude is notorious for changing his mind when it comes to stuff related to Spongebob. He originally didn't want a Spongebob movie, but the first movie exists and he is a director. He was originally done with Spongebob, left at the third season, but sometime in season nine, he came back to the show and kept working on it till he died. So this isn't the first example of, of Steven Hellenberg saying that he won't do this one thing with Spongebob, but then doing it. <laughs> He, he changes his mind a lot. People change their minds a lot. So, and the, the sheer fact that, that people are still nagging on how Stephen Elmer wouldn't want this is just insane, really. But what about the quality of the show itself? Um, again, it's okay. It's fine. It's a standard, zany, cartoony, Spudbobby feel. Um, all the the characters act like themselves most of the time. Well, except for Karen. Yeah, Karen is in this. And, uh, okay, first of all, Plankton is like the, the lunch man. And, and, uh, Karen is, is a calculator and his servant. And, like, the exact opposite of Karen from the show, just bubbly and happy. Like, what happened that made Karen you could go through a switch like that. I'll tell you, the series happened. Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy are our main trio. Um, Squidward, Bubble Bass, and Larry are the counselors. Uh, Plankton is the cafeteria man, and Karen is his servant. Uh, Mrs. Puff and Mr. Krabs are the heads of the camp. Perch Perkins is the announcer. 
And uh, uh, Gary is a random forest snail that SpongeBob just so happens to come across in one episode. Oh, that and Pearl is a baby, and there are these two new characters named Narlene and uh, her little brother, I guess. Uh, she basically is like this redneck stereotype, kind of, who pops up and causes trouble from time to time. Um, she, she's normal. Yes, so. <laughs> The characters mostly act like themselves. Uh, Patrick is still an idiot. SpongeBob is still an optimist. Squidward is still a ground. Bubble Bass is still a friggin' loser. Mr. Kraft is still stingy. But I find it very hard to believe that, with the exception of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, SpongeBob met everyone in his life at summer camp. Like, like his friends, his boss, his neighbors. There's even some of his enemies, like, I find it very, I find that very hard to believe. Yeah, I know, it's Spongebob, it's nonsensical, it doesn't take itself very seriously at all, but, like, about everyone in Spongebob's life, he met at summer camp. Let's talk about the voice acting with the characters, uh, for the most part, the act, the voice actors just do what they're normal voices would be for those characters like Tom Kenny and Roger Rumpus just do their normal Spongebob and Squidward voices same for everyone else except for the voices for Patrick and Sandy for some reason they make them sound more kiddish and it is very cringe like like everyone else is doing their normal voices why are Patrick and Sandy the only ones that are more kiddish? I think it's because like Squidward is slightly older, he's a counselor, and that uh, SpongeBob's voice is already bubbly and high pitched and kiddish, but still, I their voices get to be like, I mean, later on, it, they start to sound a bit more like regular Patrick and Sandy, but st still gets me. I don't like that. The big drawback from the show that many people hated, aside from the continuity and the, and the Stephen Helberg part, is that um, the show would be computer animated, similar to the style of Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run, which this technically is a spinoff to. And um, it's Surfaceable for TV animation. I mean, technically, this isn't TV streaming, but TV streaming, same thing. So it, it's serviceable for what it does. There are a few shots where the models are a bit janky, but for the most part, the animation is pretty tolerable. They try to do a lot of the slapsticky, the insanely cartoony animation that the show does especially in its later seasons and i every whenever i watch the show they do these things these very spongebobby things i'm just thinking to myself why not just make this the traditional spongebob animation it would look so much better animation not bad it's just it could be better so let's talk about why sandy is here so Apparently, there's an episode where Spongebob creates the Krabby Patty. That pissed me off. Don't question why we're in a different location. Continuity doesn't exist. Not even a little. So yeah, this show wants me to believe that Spongebob created the Krabby Patty. If Spongebob created the Krabby Patty, then why the Frick, is Mr. Crab the boss and Spongebob is just the chef, the fry cook, who cooks it? Why does he keep getting fired from a, from a restaurant that he founded and made the biggest item for? <laughs> this literally makes zero sense. Like... At all. I can accept the fact that that Spongebob met everyone in his life at Summer Camp, but this Camp Coral, 
I will not accept because it makes literally zero sense. When you look at literally any episode of the show. And, yeah, the first episode of Spongebob gets hired. In episode Friend or Foe, we see the fact that, that Plankton and Krabs were working on the secret formula of the Krabby Patty together. We see that Krabs was a really good chef in the Navy. And, and he came up with the Krabby Patty. Dude. My suspension of disbelief just dropped completely. That was my reaction throughout most of the episode. But, it is then revealed on why Sandy is even in Camp Coral. So apparently, uh, Sandy from the future messed everything up by communicating with herself from the past. So I get, and Spongebob ended up creating the formula somehow. So she had her younger self fix everything so uh, Plankton and, and Spongebob don't get the formula. And everything's fine. Enjoy the rest of your summer. They give an explanation, but somehow it's still confusing. Spongebob makes the secret formula. It's burnt by the rest of, by the end of the episode. If that's the case, then how did Krabs get a hold of it? The formula is destroyed by the end of that episode. Sandy just screwed up the timeline. So, how, how did Krabs get the secret formula to open up the Krusty Krab? I mean, like, how? How? So, there's no secret formula for Krabs to use. There's no secret formula for Plankton to steal. Just... Nothing, and we all know how much Bikini Bottom loves Krabby Patties. Without a real delicious food for them to eat on, Bikini Bottom is probably in freaking chaos right now. We all know how how the customers at Krusty Krab are when they don't get their Krabby Patties, and we all know what happened in Sponge Out of Water when the secret formula was just gone out of Bikini Bottom altogether. I mean, Bikini Bottom looked like freaking Mad Max, dude. And like, there's no Krabby Patty, no secret formula. So, yeah, Sandy, whatever the freak you did, you screwed up. The only way I think that this makes sense is that this takes place in another universe. Um, I mean, here's the thing. When we see young Sandy communicate with older Sandy, the future is in 2D, yet the past is CGI. That doesn't make any sense. Like, how does the time period indicate what animation style it is? Wouldn't it make more sense that the future CG and the past is hand drawn? That that's that's how it works. That's, that's how time works. Like, the only way I can see that making sense is if it was another universe. It would explain the different art style, different animation. It would explain why SpongeBob met everyone else at a different time period. Would explain why Spongebob came up with a formula. And why there's no formula. At all by the end of the episode. It, it would explain a lot. So maybe it's not time travel. And Spongebob. And the two Sandys were just communicating via. Dimensions. I mean. Alternate dimensions do exist. In the Spongebob universe. So. It wouldn't be that surprising. So that's my Camp Coral theory. I doubt I'll make a separate episode on uh, that alone, but we'll just wait and see. What is the point of Camp Coral? Why does this show exist? Okay, I know the obvious answer. Money! But realistically, like, narratively what what does what is the point of having camp coral be its own show tonally it is very much the same as spongebob sure it takes place in a different time period probably takes place in a different universe from my from how i think it has all the same characters and all the and they're all the same voice actors and the style is very similar. 
The only difference is that they're younger, it's CG, and they're at a summer camp. So, every episode of Camp Coral could easily just be an episode of Spongebob. You guys are probably like, oh, it'll just be too, too confusing to have one one ep have a set of episodes with them as adults and another set of episodes with them as kids. You know, Be Be We Bear Bears did the same thing where you would have episodes of the, the bears with as adults and episodes with the bears as cubs doing misadventures around the town. Like, So you can do that with a TV show. These could easily just have been Spongebob episodes. Yeah, just the only thing that justifies it being its own series is the art style. If this show had been released after Spongebob, and Spongebob already ended, then I can accept it. Let's take a look at Steven Universe Future, for instance. All of those episodes are very similar to that of Steven Universe. But since Steven Universe Future came out a year after Steven Universe ended, it can justify it being its own series and it justified being so similar. Something like this or the Loud House spinoff, the Casa Grandes, can't really. Both of those shows are tonally and stylistically very similar to uh, each shows, each of the shows that preceded it. Especially the, uh, the Casa Grandes, which is very much like the exact same art style as the Loud House. So those can literally just be Loud House episodes. In fact, the Loud House did several episodes, which was about Ronnie Ann and her extended family. So yeah, those episodes of the Casa Grandes could easily just be episodes of the Loud House. And episodes of Camp Coral could easily just be episodes of SpongeBob. This is why I am optimistic for the the Patrick Star show. And yeah, another SpongeBob spin-off coming out this summer, this time airing on Nickelodeon, which will be about Patrick Star and his family. It will be more of a sitcom and it'll be focused on Patrick doing a big little talk show in his bedroom with his little sister. Uh so th that show sounds like it's going to be more of its own thing. That justifies it being a spinoff and separate from Spongebob. In conclusion, Camp Coral, Spongebob's Under Years, is not a bad show. It is just a completely unnecessary show. And each episode could easily just be an episode of Spongebob. Like, change up the art style, put the Spongebob theme before it and you got yourself a spongebob episode man it i mean the animation is barely enough to justify it being its own show so yeah i like the show but my god is it pointless so, what do you guys think? Did you guys enjoy Camp Coral? Did you guys not enjoy Camp Coral? Do you think it was pointless? Think it think it was necessary? What did you guys think? Please let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, then uh, be sure to check out the rest of the videos for SpongeBob Month. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And ring the bell to be notified on when those videos are released. I got a bunch of videos planned for the rest of the month. Uh, two more SpongeBob related Toon Talks and a couple covers. And uh, we'll just, and if maybe there is a piece of SpongeBob news, I'll cover it. Who knows? Anyway, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.